Howdy, folks. Welcome to a world of fantasy with seven magical lands of timeless fun. The Magic Kingdom, where happily ever afters happen every day. Wait a minute. I love that idea. How about some backstage passes? Karebuni. I am Warden Wilson Muchua, and I am happy to welcome you to Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Welcome to the WDW Reflections Podcast with your hosts, Dewey, Ron, and Tony. Here, we'd love to talk about the Walt Disney World Resort, the way we remember it, how it's changed, and why we still enjoy visiting the most magical place on Earth. We're not experts, but we want to share our unique experiences and memories with you. You may learn some facts you never knew before, and you may return to some of your own memories of the Walt Disney World Resort. And we'd love to share these memories together. So come with us on a podcast journey as we reflect on the WDW Reflections Podcast. Please stand clear of the doors. Reflections. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the WDW Reflections Podcast, your unofficial guide through Disney World and all things Disney memories and their connections to the parks that we know and love today. I'm Dewey. One of the hosts of this host of the show coming to you from Delaware, where I just happen to live right now. And this is episode number 53 of the WDW Reflections podcast. We thank you all for being here with us. Before we get into this week's main topic, we'd like to invite you all to connect with us through the show's social media accounts. We can be found on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube at WDW Reflections podcast and Twitter at WDW Reflections. There we go. That's better. And don't forget, for all things WDW Reflections Podcast, head on over to our website at WDWReflectionsPodcast.com. All right. With that out of the way, let's get started with the show. With me today are my podcast travel buddies, Ron and Tony. Coming to us from Cleveland, Tennessee, my buddy, Ron. How's it going, Ron? It, we're, hey, man, we're doing great. I uh, enjoyed celebrating the holidays with family and just looking forward to chatting with you guys all things Disney today. Yeah, and you were telling us before we recorded that you were able to go spend a couple of weeks with uh, your daughter and her husband and the grandbaby for Christmas. So that uh, it, I saw some of your your uh, social media photos and stuff and you guys look like y'all had a pretty good time. Yeah, it was awesome. That's good. I'm glad y'all got to got to share that special time together. Absolutely. All right. And then my good buddy coming to us from the Big Apple, Tony G. How you doing, Tony? Hey, everybody. Good morning, guys. I'm happy to be here and happy to be ringing in the new year, 2024, as we record this on the final day of 2023. And I just wanted to remind everybody also, in addition to all the links that Dewey was talking about, we are trying to hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. And if we do, uh, I have a box here that has a mystery item that's going to go out to somebody. We'll let you know what it is if we ever do hit that. Um, And for you folks on video, this is what it is. So uh, come to our YouTube page. It's uh, also at WDW Reflections Podcast, and you'll see extras from the show things that um we don't necessarily share here or if you just want to see our funny faces as we record the show oh yeah um uh the 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 listeners are clamoring for (laughs) more more shots of our faces (laughs) (laughs) oh that they they're they're dying for it so you can come see us on our youtube channel uh, but yeah, it's a good, uh, lots of good stuff. We're uh, uh, we we're proud of the content that we're creating, and uh, every every podcast we do a, an accompanying video podcast, so you can find those on on YouTube, and I, I think there's video podcasts on Spotify now. They too. are on Spotify as well, yeah. So, uh, man, technology! I tell you, we don't have flying cars like Back to the Future told us, but we do have video podcasts. So I guess yeah, that's pretty close. All right, so I guess, uh, so let's talk about something real quick. So this is, like Tony said, this is, we're recording on Sunday morning, December 31st. So right on the precipice of uh, 2024. 
And uh, I think the way we 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 worked out the show is that we've started our new seasons uh, at the beginning of the new calendar year. So we started the show in August of 21. So this will be our fourth calendar year. So season four of the WDW Reflections podcast will be starting uh, with this episode in January 2024. So uh, something exciting that we wanted to introduce is that uh, we are going to be releasing a new two new logos for the show. Uh, we've got um, uh, I so I've been uh, working and teaching myself how to use Canva over the last few months and um, just for, started kind of playing around and thought, hey, I want to I want to create a new logo for maybe uh, eventually we can do some some merch, some sweatshirts or something like that. So I created a a circular logo, perfect for like a hoodie or something like that. And uh, uh, I used some of the old retro uh, Disney World and and specifically Epcot logos, some of those old 70s and early 80s color schemes and stuff like that, and uh, created a couple of new logos for the show. So um, the circle one you guys will see on... Uh, on our social media accounts and stuff like that, like the avatar and that, and everything like that for the social media accounts. And then the second one is more like, uh, I guess you could call it like an album cover. And uh, it's uh, like the, the, the logo that you see on Spotify and Apple podcasts and stuff like it's like the album cover for the show. And um, reminiscent of the original logo, I just wanted to, take some of the 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 color schemes and the cues from the the circle logo and carry those over to the uh the album cover if you will and um so that there would be like that cohesion between the two logos so we'll be uh releasing those as um uh, as uh, season four of the show is released in january 2024 so uh take a look out for those we're really excited to to I wouldn't call it or wouldn't call it a rebranding, but um, maybe just an evolution of what we uh, refreshing. Yeah, refresh of what we're you know we want to keep things exciting and and new around uh, the WDW Reflections podcast. So we're excited to share those with you guys. So go take a look at those when you have a chance, and uh, let us know what you think. All right, fellas, so uh, you guys ready to go ahead and uh, get started with this week's main topic? Let's go forth. Go forth. All right, make it so. Let's do some <laughs> Count to Picard. That's, that that would have been, that's, I was waiting for that, Tony. All right. So, uh, so this week, with the new year upon us, we wanted to take a look at all the exciting Disney things that are going to be happening in 2024. So as Tony said earlier, we're recording on the 31st. So 2024 is literally right here, right around the corner. So we wanted to talk about what 2024 has in store for us. From major theater releases to Disney Plus to the Walt Disney World theme parks, we've got you covered right here with all the things happening around Disney and the Disney company in 2024. So I thought we would break it down into a couple of different categories. Three, I guess you could say. Uh, I went with uh, movies, major theater releases, and then I've got some Disney Plus stuff. And then I've got uh, some news about the Walt Disney World Resort, uh, not just theme parks, but some of the some of the stuff happening around the resorts as well. So why don't we start with movies? And uh, I'll start off just by saying that I was actually kind of surprised at uh, the the lack of major theater releases coming out in uh, 2024 from what, you know, the I guess the giant parent company is Disney. But if you think about it, Disney owns Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar, Walt Disney Pictures, and uh, all the Fox releases. So five major studios. And as of right now, they've only released the name and release dates of seven movies coming out in all of 2024. And that kind of 
that was kind of a surprise to me because you know five major uh five major movie companies with only seven released uh release dates for films do you now think, they, I'm sorry to interrupt, dude, but do you think that's mostly a response to the backlash that they got last year with response to moviegoers? They, uh, for some reason, moviegoers just, just did not want to go see any Disney movies last year uh, in, the, in the numbers that they had in previous years, I should say. But yeah. I, I think it's more just moviegoers didn't want to go to the movies in general rather than the... A lot of people are blaming the quality of the movies, but I think the quality was there. It's just that the, the people just aren't going to the movies the way they used to. Listen, only two movies in 2023 really were blockbusters, you know, that made a ton of money. And of course, and for a dumb reason. Yeah, I, 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 I still haven't seen either one of them. I probably will never see Barbie. I have zero interest in that. Uh, Oppenheimer, I will watch that. I'm a, I'm a big history guy, so that is on my to do list. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't understand. I didn't understand the giant hype around all of that um and unfortunately you know, it was that hype i think you know as, as a as a person who used to go to the movies way back in the day i think that it was that hype that got audiences into the theater and unfortunately i don't understand why that same hype didn't carry over to some of the other disney releases i mean we had huge we had an indiana jones movie last year and it underperformed ant-man and the wasp from marvel underperformed mm -hmm. the disney um i think they had two releases uh, of the animation last year maybe even a pixar i can't even name them right now to tell you what they were i, I think elemental and um i can't well, think I of the other wish, one. wish wish came right. out yeah, I mean, and and those are no one even thinks about those. And then everything, like, wasn't the Little Mermaid this past year as well? All these big releases that should have been bigger than they were, people just didn't bother going to the movies to see them. And the Marvels came out Marvels. too, and that the was Marvels, that... Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep, I guess Guardians did okay. It yeah. made it made more money than they spent to make it, but the Marvels didn't even make back their budget. Right. Um, which, you know, is shocking when you think about, you know, five years ago, the money that Marvel movies were making. I just think um, really in this age of social media, what's what's happening is that people are paying too much attention to one person's opinion and going by that. And rather than uh, thinking, hey, th let me go see that movie because it might be good. It might be interesting. That plus the price of the other thing they're not putting into perspective is the price of going to the movies. I mean, here in the city I live in, uh, just to go see Indiana Jones uh, uh, back in May, which was the first movie I'd gone to go see in almost four years or maybe past four years, it was $40 for just myself and my wife. So, you know, that's a lot of money. And if you add up everybody think, in your family. Yeah. To your point, Tony, I think that, um, the world's changed a little bit and I think people have increased, um, their own home theaters. Yes. Out of necessity. And so now there's not, not rushed to the the theater it used to be people would go weekly right the, the absolutely next, every friday gets, now it's i don't know that i want to spend my money to do that exactly. when i've got a theater at home that's not it's not a commercial theater but it's set up to where i can enjoy in the luxury of my home eat the snacks I want, not pay an arm and leg for them. And, and now to go to the movie is a treat more than, than a, it's, it's kind of reverted back to when people did things at home and movies were more of a treat than they were just a everyday thing. That's my own personal opinion. I just don't know that movies are going to draw people like they used to. I totally agree with you. And I think what 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 drew people to those two blockbusters this year was the fact, was all the hype and the fact that people thought they had to do it. You know, every, if all your friends are doing it, then you have to go see those two movies together. It was just a dumb reason, in my opinion. That's not the reason you go see a movie. And there were plenty of other movies that, that were out there that, that probably deserved that attention. <coughs> Excuse me. I actually went to... Um, the the Raiders of Lost Ark. Yeah, if people don't see that; they missed a good one. I they did was... miss a good one. Yeah, and I'm going to, from another perspective, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put on my blue collar every every man kind of guy 
opinion here, but I think the movies have priced themselves out of the middle class, uh, just like sporting events. I, I cannot afford to go see an NFL football game. I, it's just it just costs too much. Um, or even and, a concert, do we imagine? I mean, the concerts are out. Of absolutely, control. same thing. Um, they're they're pricing themselves out of the middle class, uh, you know, price range. Uh, simply just can't afford to go do it with a family of four. And, uh, it, you know, it, they're paying, you know, NFL football players are making $70 million a year or whatever. And and now, you know, movie movie stars are making $20 million per film. You can't even make a movie for less than $100 million because you got to pay the, the actors, you know? Yeah. And if they weren't paying these people so much money, maybe it wouldn't cost so much to make a movie and maybe it wouldn't cost so much to buy a ticket to a movie and maybe more people would go. Right. Just and take their families. And, and then there's the other thing, speaking of Disney plus, which we're going to be talking about today, the fact that we had these streaming services is something totally different that we didn't have four years ago. Everybody has access to these things that uh, now you can watch, you, you know, I'll just wait to see that movie at home rather than like yep. Ron was just saying, you have this beautiful system. Why do you want to, you know, lug your whole family into the, into the uh, theater and pay all that money to be surrounded with a bunch of other people who make noise and, and all that kind of stuff where you can just see it in the comfort of your own living room on your own big screen screen whenever you want pause it go to the bathroom do whatever you've got to do so there's a lot of factors that are involved uh, in that i just wish that these companies wouldn't panic so much and think oh my gosh no one's going to the movie so it's a total failure it's not necessarily it's a total failure it's just that people don't feel i think the habits of people have changed over the past couple of years and they've got to take that into account yeah you know i mean if you look back to a couple of years ago uh solo uh, which i think was a fantastic movie um, I thought it, I really enjoyed it, but it, you know, didn't make a billion dollars like they wanted it to. So they consider it a commercial failure yeah. and they scrap any, any sequel Future talks plans. or yeah. any, you know what I mean? And yep. I wanted more, I wanted sure. to see more of, um, you know, the, which maybe we still get the young Lando. They're still yeah. maybe going to do still, that. Yeah. Still working on it. Um, I dude, I would watch Amelia Clark do her laundry. I don't mm -hmm. care what she's, you know what I mean? Yeah. I wanted to see more of that character. Um, you know, but Disney decided to scrap it because it didn't make back all of its money or didn't make what they thought it was going to or whatever. Um, you know, so I think that they do need to re-examine uh, what, how they consider something to be a success or not. But, um, yeah, I mean, nowadays, if it doesn't make, uh, more than 500 million at the theater in the first weekend, they consider it a flop, which is ridiculous. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, but so I don't know that we're going to figure out the, the problems with the box office, <laughs> but, uh, that might, no, I'm be just saying it, it could be the reason they only have seven. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now they do have about a dozen release dates listed. But it says, uh, it's like unknown release, you know, January 2024, unknown release, May 2024. So they've got about a dozen movies that I, I guess are in production or, or something. But that doesn't make sense to me either because, you know, so you're having people having trouble getting people to the theaters. So now you're not going to advertise. Now you're not even going to release the name of what's coming out. <laughs> How does that fix it? It's like, yeah, it's a big secret. We're not going to tell you. Honestly, I think that's part of what happened with me. With I mean, I don't know how many people had this issue with the Marvels. I, I saw the commercial for the Marvels and I said, coming to theaters this Friday. I said, this Friday? I thought that was for next year. I had no right. idea. There was not enough publicity for it that, to let me know that it was coming. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what they're looking, you know, how they're, how that's going to be effective, but the ones that we do know, uh, there's seven of them. And, um, you know, I, I, maybe I'm just a weirdo, but I don't really, I'm not really going to talk about the, the Fox studios, uh, movies. Cause I don't know, I don't really consider them Disney movies. Uh, and those of you listening, I'm doing air quotes. So, um, I don't know. It's, maybe hard, it's hard for some reason to, to associate like something like ice age anymore with Disney, even though that's part of their, 
their envelope now, it just seems weird. It doesn't fit in with with what we know right. of equality. It's crazy. Yeah. So what I did is I just went by um I've got Marvel, I've got Pixar, and I've got Walt Disney Pictures in, and that leaves only three movies coming out in 2024. The first one is Inside Out 2. So you guys remember Inside Out. It's like sadness yes. and anger and uh bing Disgust. bong. Yes. Yeah, just you know, let's have a moment of silence for bing bong. That was, you know. <laughs> but uh, you know, a, a major loss to uh to moviegoers. But uh Inside Out. So you guys remember that, right? Did you Absolutely. were you guys big Inside Out fans or I know Mike I I think we talked about it for a minute or two earlier. This movie came out around 2015 or so. And my kids were kind of on the edge of watching animated movies about that time. My daughter was probably still around like 10 or so. My son was 13 or so. So he was kind of, you know, too cool for Disney cartoons at that point. So we saw Inside Out. Uh, it was good. It was cute. I laughed, you know, a little bit, but I didn't absolutely love it. Uh, I don't know that I needed to see a sequel. What do you guys think? Were you guys wanting to see a sequel to Inside Out? Ron? I, it wasn't my favorite. I mean, I will we watch it? Will it be seen likely? I'm not sitting over here waiting for it to come out, though. You don't have that release date on a countdown on your desktop? Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, just so you know, it comes out June fourteenth. June fourth. So there's not even in the first six months of uh twenty twenty four, there's not a major theater release coming out from any of the Disney, you know, Disney Pixar or uh Marvel Studios. So I think that's that's kind of big news. But uh, you know, inside out two, I, I'm sure it'll be cute. Um you know, I, it I'm had, sure it had probably good, it had 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 good performers in it, and the, and yes. the characters were cute. Uh, I thought the the design of the characters was really cute, but I, the overall the story didn't really appeal to me. I'm I'm only somewhat interested in seeing this new one. I'm trying to figure out which uh, Epcot Pavilion they're going to destroy to put in an Inside Out. Uh, probably they've, uh, they've been talking in. about putting it in that in the Wonders of Life area for the, for the longest time. Uh, no comment. <laughs> next, <laughs> next up is uh, is one that I'm actually am excited about is uh, coming out in July, July 26, 2024. Is Deadpool three, which it. You know, I, I is really exciting because I'm a fan of Deadpool. Uh, really excited because they've already released that um, they're bringing in uh, Wolverine, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine character from X Men because you know Disney owns the world now. So since they bought Fox, they have access to Deadpool. They have access to the X Men. So. I'm really excited for Deadpool to, to bring the X-Men into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So this one, I am really hyped for. Uh, I hope it doesn't, you know, tank like Marvel's and um, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, you know, those things. I, I hope it doesn't kill the franchise because it doesn't make $7 billion. But uh, I'm excited for this one. Are you guys Deadpool fans or uh, you guys looking forward to Deadpool 3? I've actually never seen the other two yet. I have; I, they're on my list. I'm anxious to see them, but they uh, at the time when they came out, they were seen as not part of the whole thing, so I didn't really pay them much attention. But I do like uh, Wolverine, and so I am interested to see what this new film will be like. Ron, have you seen the Deadpool movies? I've I've not I've seen glimpses, but I've not seen sat down and seen the entire movie in its entirety, um, or the movies I should say. And um, but I am looking forward to Wolverine. Um, I've seen portions of that, so I think I don't know how Deadpool missed the, my my viewing opportunity, but. We, we never got to see those. Well, I think Tony's on to something. It's because they weren't um, weren't released by Marvel Studios. So it wasn't in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or anything. So it was more more Fox. So it had some... 
some characters from the X-Men movies that weren't, let's be honest, weren't great. Uh, but Deadpool was fantastic. Both of the Deadpool movies were fantastic. Um, a little and he's more. Very, he's extremely popular. I know every time I watch footage from any any kind of convention, everybody's just as dreadful as that. Absolutely. Uh, hilarious. They're good action movies. They're good superhero movies. But Ryan Reynolds is hilarious. So uh, I'm really excited. You guys, you guys need to watch the first two and then I'll come back. I'll be honest. I know. thought. Uh, when they came out, I thought they were a parody. It um, did look like a parody, yeah. And also, not a, not only that, I remember some things people saying it was crass and and vulgar. So I kind of held off because of that. So there is um, an element of, uh, I guess you could say, toilet humor to uh, to Deadpool. Uh, he's definitely not squeaky clean. But uh, so which is different than although even the Marvel movies have started letting some, you know, dirty words get into, you know, the those those movies o over the last couple of years, but uh, not exactly clean, I guess you could say, but it's uh, it's almost kind of like Punisher or something like that. It's gritty. You know what I mean? Uh, kind of a little more realistic and it's uh you know for a superhero movie but it's he he's completely different and if you know anything about the 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 comic books he breaks the fourth wall and and talks directly to the uh to the audience which he does in the comic books and stuff so it's a lot of i don't know if i would say groundbreaking but it's a lot different than uh, your typical superhero movie. So they're really good. Uh, you guys need to check them out. Um, and uh, and then I'm I'm ready for Deadpool 3. I'm really excited about it. So I'm excited. I hope because it's Disney, they don't try to, um, you know, hold back or make changes because it's, you know, doesn't seem like a Disney movie or whatever because he's so vulgar or whatever. But... Um, that one was I put on they, hold, right? During the during the pandemic, didn't they start filming most of it? And a lot of uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. I think it was supposed to come out before, uh, but you know, all the all the pauses and stuff because of the pandemic. But I'm really excited about this one. The last one that we'll talk about today for movies is one that I I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't particularly care at all about. Um, <laughs> And this is, uh, and if it were animated, I would probably care because the original animated movie was fantastic, but this doesn't, uh, I didn't like the live action remake of the Lion King. So it was just, you know, it, I mean, it was almost a shot for shot remake just with CGI lions instead of computer or instead of animated lions. So Mufasa. Wait, 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 say it again. Mufasa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a prequel to the Lion King. And I guess it's about Mufasa's rise to power or whatever, or how he becomes king of the jungle. I don't know. Um, but it, it's live action. It's, it's the same computer lions that i didn't care about when they made the lion king release so i mean it, it looked beautiful but there were no expressions on the animals faces so it was it was hard to relate to it yeah i i don't know um i guess i'm just not in love with all these live action remakes and it, it makes me laugh i mean we're calling it live action but it's cgi lions it's That's not true. even live i don't know i don't know what to call it but it's you know it's a live action remake of one of the greatest animated films of all time and i didn't love it like i, I we actually this came out pre-pandemic so we went and saw it in the theaters and uh, uh i'm not gonna lie maybe it's because i'm old but i fell asleep i fell asleep in the theater um with a belly full of popcorn and i fell asleep <laughs> during the the cgi lion king um did you guys get to see uh little mermaid this year I have not seen that yet. Okay. I have I've not seen, seen that. that. I've seen most of the live actions, uh, and they're pretty good. I like Aladdin. Um, 
uh, you know, I liked Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Emma Watson was fantastic in that. You know, so I, I thought Little Mermaid was okay, but I just didn't really see any reason for that to be made. That's all. That was just right. my opinion. I was like, okay, this is all right, but why? All of these live action remakes, it just seems lazy. They're like, hey, we've got a script already. All we got to do is hire some actors. Absolutely. You know, That's I don't I mean. know. It just seems lazy. I want. You know, I, I've i seen The Lion King 137 times. I don't need to see it now with computer-generated lions. You know, uh, I don't know. Well, but I, I made that comment before the first time I saw the stage show. I, I, literally, I was saying to myself, I could just be home watching this if you're not going to bring anything new to it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't know, man. Um, but it's, it's all OK. Uh, you know what? This is a new story. So maybe yeah. I'm being a little harsh. This is this is not a remake of The Lion King again. It's a prequel. this is a new story. So uh, maybe they figured out the expressionless lions. Maybe they fixed that and new story. So maybe I should stop being so negative. I'm Do you guys remember? I mean, the audience might not even remember. Remember, there was a Lion King sequel that was like the biggest movie of its time back then. I, I think it was Lion King one and a half. Was it? Yes. Uh -huh. It was like, it was like a oh, huge, yeah. huge, huge hit back then. I have it on DVD right mm -hmm. back here. If you want to borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. I, you know, I, I'm going to stop being so critical because this is new content. So stop complaining, Dewey. This is, you, you know, new content, be happy. So, uh, December 20th of 2024. So literally still a year away. You know, the movie everybody's waiting for is Lady Tremaine. That's the one everybody's been uh, sitting there. What is that? I didn't see that on the list. Is I'm that kid I'm oh. kidding? That's Cinderella's okay. Cinderella's stepmother. Yes. I, I, Hey, you know what? They're making something about all these fringe characters. What it would made not her evil? Me. What made her turn that way? Yeah. I heard that they're going, that Lady Tremaine's going to be the new topic in Spaceship Earth they're they're uh yeah that's going to be the 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 new remake of spaceship earth is lady tremaine did you know that <laughs> so that's it for disney movie releases like i said there's a that's dozen crazy. of them that are no name released yet and then there's a couple from fox there's a new alien movie there's a new um uh a new spy film coming out that look i mean it looks interesting uh, you know, there's three or four from Fox that aren't really, I don't, you know, I don't really associate with Disney. So I didn't, uh, didn't put them on this list, but seven total, that's not a lot. Now let's skip on over to Disney plus now Disney plus in 2024, no joke. There's probably about 50 or 75 things that are listed for release in 2024 for disney plus uh we definitely don't have time to talk about all of those today so i just took a list of about i don't know it looks like 10 or 12 for uh for us to talk about today and we may not even talk about them a whole lot it may just be uh, um uh you know just just talk about it real quickly and then move on but there's, uh, let's see, the first thing coming out, it's actually just in a couple of weeks that I'm actually pretty excited about. Uh, if you watched, uh, now I think, Tony, we've talked about Hawkeye in the past, and you had, didn't watch Hawkeye yet. Is that correct? I, I, oh, I have seen it now. Okay, good. Ron, have you seen Hawkeye yet? I have not. Go watch Hawkeye. It's fantastic. And it's a year old. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Spending time with your grandchild and going to work. Come on, sit yourself onto the couch and watch some TV, Ron. I, I'm telling you, I need to. <laughs> well, Hawkeye was fantastic, and you need to watch it before you see this release coming out. Episode one comes out on January 9th, and it's Echo. So Echo is a character from Hawkeye. If, if yeah, I'm not a big comic book guy from my childhood, so I was unfamiliar with Echo uh, until uh, until she was in Hawkeye, the series. But uh, it continues the story of from Hawkeye and you know the big bad from both Daredevil and from uh, the Hawkeye series. So, um, it's it's pretty exciting. She was she was kind of a uh, 
kind of a an apprentice in a way interesting character she yeah. has uh pretty strong could beat up people and stuff but lots of skills but i'm excited for the show it comes out january 9th and i tell you i'm as critical as a lot of people have been about the the marvel um series that came out in 2023 i, I enjoyed them uh, i think i enjoyed I, all of them also did you the a lot of people were really really critical about um the last one it was with sam jackson and oh, i didn't get Clark. to see that that's one, the one we're up to we're up to that, that one um i liked it i didn't love it yeah um but it was it was pretty good uh a lot of people were really critical of it but i enjoyed everything that came out in 2023 i liked she hulk i liked yeah. um Ms. Marvel, you know, I liked all of that stuff. So I'm excited for Echo. Ron, go watch Hawkeye so you can watch Echo with us. Okay, I'll do that. Now, that is the, oh, it, it's crazy. That is the only thing in 2024 that has a date. Everything else that we're going to talk about, at least the ones that I put on my list, everything else says TBD. And some of them might have a month or a season, like one of them says fall, but most of them are TBD to be determined 2024. So uh, we'll start here. Um, so there's no way for me to do it chronologically because it doesn't really say. Uh, but one that I'm very, very excited for is season two of Andor. And that says to be determined August of 2024. But um, Andor was fan freaking tastic. It was dark. It was gritty. It was uh, captivating. It was everything that I want Star Wars to be. Uh, since one of the best things Disney Star Wars has put out, so I'm really excited for Andor season two, did, fellas. Did you guys? I'm sure Ron, you're going to say no, uh, Tony. I think you did see Andor season one, right? I did. I did see Andor season one. What do you think? Um, well, I like the character, but you know, as far as the overall thing, uh, that that's where we're kind of up uh, on opposite ends of it. For me, dark and gritty Star Wars is not Star Wars for me. Star Wars should be fun and ridiculous. So I, I enjoyed it, but it's not it's not what I feel as Star Wars. It was okay. Tony prefers his intergalactic civil wars to be uplifting and fun. And funny. It has to be funny. <laughs> it has to be very funny. But I thought the, the acting was good. The first few episodes were very good. Oh, yeah. So uh, maybe I'm just a dark, twisted soul. I don't know. Maybe that maybe that's why I enjoy it. I want to see K2SO. I was waiting for him the whole time. I'm like, where's my joy? Well, this is a prequel to the... the I know. Um, you know, spoiler alert, he doesn't make it out of Rogue One, Tony. <laughs> That's so. what I'm saying. So he, we don't have enough. <laughs> he doesn't have enough screen time. <laughs> Maybe we can get a prequel series just about K2SO. I need some snarky funniness. Quick, Tony, call Kathleen Kennedy and say, demand more K2SO. I'll, I'll get her on the line in a bit. Where's his standalone series? <laughs> no, so I'm looking I'm forward really to looking... that. I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting to see oh, what, yeah. uh, what happens. And hey, Ron. When you're done with uh when you're done with Hawkeye, <laughs> switch right on over to Andor, my friend. <laughs> Dude, they're like 40 minute episodes. What are you doing with your life? M more than you, obviously. No, I'm watching a lot of TV. <laughs> All right. So another one that uh I'm really, really excited for. And uh here you go. TBD. Fall 2024, it says. Uh, but what I think was the the best Marvel series that they've put out on on Disney Plus, the one of the best characters from that is finally getting her own show. Agatha Dark Hole Diaries is coming out uh, in well, the fall of 2024, and I am super super excited for this because. Uh, WandaVision was unbelievably good and fun and exciting to watch. Like, edge of your seat stuff. Couldn't wait for the next episode. And Agatha was fantastic in that. I love 
Uh, I love this lady as an actor. She's great in everything she's in. And uh, uh, WandaVision was amazing. So I'm really excited for for this uh, this this release. Catherine Hahn, I, I don't care what she's in. She's really good. And um, they for a while, this was called um, House of Harkness. But now I guess they've changed the name of it to Dark Hole Diaries as they've reworked it or whatever. But um, I'm really excited for this. And uh, Ron, did you see WandaVision? <laughs> no. It, oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Ron, you were killing me. So, <laughs> so I, I hope you're making a list over there, Ron, because you can't I am watch. Making a list. You can't I'm, watch Agatha. I'm looking at can't watch Agatha until you see WandaVision. And WandaVision was amazing. So uh, are, you haven't been watching any of the Marvel movies in the last two years, have you? Yeah, we've I've seen the Marvel movies. Stop watching the movies because you're out of order. You got to watch the shows. There's a chronologic chronology to this, Ron. You're, you're jacking <laughs> it up, dude. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't realize my movie watching had to become an, a a a a education study to know what. Oh yeah, watch. dude. Every time I go to watch, I, dude, I'm a giant nerd. Come on. Every time I go to watch a new anything with Marvel, I Google Marvel chronology, and I make sure that I'm not watching something out of order. I don't watch a movie until I've seen the TV shows that happened before it. So it's a giant universe. You got to watch them in order. It's funny. So, you're you're saying that and we're, yeah. and we're talking about D20, uh, Disney, Disney plus. I happen to be in the midst of a Marvel chronological order rewatch. Uh, if you scroll down a bit on one of the, um, it's hard to find, but if you have to click on the Marvel tab and then scroll down on that tab, it's got the, um, the, it's got them in different chronological orders, uh, depending on what they're doing. And uh, I'm in the middle of the, which I'm blanking out on the name because it's it's my age. The thing about the crystals, the, the what, what do you call that again? The, the, the Infinity, Infinity Saga. Infinity yeah. Saga. Yeah, I'm in the midst of the Infinity Saga, and we've been rewatching them in the chronological order, which helps make a lot more sense. Uh, Absolutely. I'm with you, uh, Dewey, on that. All of this stuff is intertwined you know and you can't watch dr strange and uh uh what is it the multiverse of madness you can't watch that and understand what's going on if you haven't seen wandavision like yeah, it's all that's true you know yeah, that is connected. you don't know why wanda is acting that way in multiverse of madness you don't know why she's you know the scarlet witch now if you don't haven't seen WandaVision. Apparently so. that's probably true with the Marvels as well. If you didn't see Ms. Marvel, you don't know who that is with yep. running around. Absolutely. So, um, uh, Ron, this says fall of 2024. So you got some time <laughs> to go watch WandaVision, but put WandaVision at the top of your list. All right. Next up, uh, is, uh, another one that's pretty exciting uh daredevil born again so the daredevil series was they did some filming and i think they completely scrapped what they had already filmed because it wasn't wasn't i don't know was it screening well was it testing well whatever so they completely scrapped it and are starting over uh there was even some release some like leaked photos of from the set and daredevil was wearing like that his yellow um yellow uh uniform or From whatever superhero yeah. outfit and i guess that's more true to what he looked like in the comic books uh but i guess they've they've scrapped all that and are going to try again and uh which is exciting because the daredevil character uh is is a really cool character but a lot of people weren't happy with how he was used in um uh she hulk so I, I don't know they they're 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 work reworking it or whatever, but that's supposed to come out. It doesn't even have a time. It's just TBD twenty twenty four. And speaking of which, he had his yellow outfit in that. He did in She Hulk. He had yeah. uh, uh, had some of the yellow elements to his to his uh, 
I don't know. What do you call it? A superhero the outfit? Uniform? I, guess. I, yeah, I, uniform, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to call it. Yeah. But um, uh, he was also in the last Spider-Man movie yeah. real quick. Briefly. So yeah. he's made a couple of little cameos here and there. But uh, Daredevil is a cool character. I'm excited uh, for some more Daredevil. I, I think what I read, I don't know if you heard that they completely scrapped it. I heard they just wanted to reshoot those scenes with him with the outfit. Oh, okay. So I I don't know. I've heard I heard that it was a complete redo, like start over. But you know, that's very brave of them if they are doing that. The truth, the truth is probably somewhere in between. Yeah. You know, so um, I'm really excited for that, Ron. I'm just going to assume you haven't seen She Hulk. So I have. <laughs> so hey, Ron, did you know that they've got this thing called Disney Plus? And on Disney Plus, they put shows on it. Dude, I did, but I don't traditionally get the opportunity to decide what is being viewed on my television. Hmm, that's weird. So what? You're you're someone else in your house is controlling the remote control, and you're stuck watching Hallmark Christmas movies all year. Not all year. <laughs> <laughs> just just seven months yeah yeah uh, i'm going to need you to battle for control of that remote control and take take control of your television be funny we really don't watch a lot of tv um but yes i we need to watch some of these movies because we love them all right so um Iron Heart is next. It's another one that just says TBD. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about Iron Heart. I know Iron Heart is a uh, uh, like a, a character that has uh, an advanced suit, sort of like uh, Iron Man, or not like Iron Man, but it's like an Iron Man suit. And uh, but it's a younger character who I believe is supposed to be part of the Young Avengers, and I think they're building towards that. Uh, this is another one that just says 2024. Doesn't say when. Uh, but this one looks cool. Um, and I'm just going to run through the list here. If you guys have, if you guys want to make a comment or express your undying love for uh, one of these projects, just like holler out and we'll we'll stop. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to kind of go through them. Uh, here's another one of those. I didn't know we needed it, but it looks like we're going to get it. Uh, everyone's favorite live action adaptation of... Lilo and Stitch. So for, T um, for Disney Plus? Uh it's what it says. Yes, Disney Plus. Uh live action Lilo and Stitch. It I don't know. And this one doesn't doesn't specify if it's a movie or a series. Doesn't say. Uh, but it does it is slated for Disney Plus. So that leads me to believe it's a series. But um I don't know. That'll be interesting. We haven't seen a live action series yet so um not sure what that's all about but it's on the list slated for 2024 so i guess we'll see um you know didn't know we needed it didn't know we needed some live action uh lilo and stitch but we're getting it so okay great uh the next one is uh, have you guys watched, uh, and, and I don't even know why I'm asking you, Ron, but uh, have you guys watched any of the What If, the Marvel What If series, that I've animated series? Mm -hmm. So one of the Marvel What If series was um, Marvel Zombies, and the, the, the heroes became zombies, right? They were infected and whatever. So there's actually going to be a slated for 2024, doesn't say when, um, but it's a animated series from Marvel Studios reimagines the Marvel Universe as a next generation of heroes battle against the zombie scourge. So uh, no longer are the, the heroes, the Avengers fighting, you know, Thanos and stuff like that. They're going to be fighting uh, zombies. So that sounds that's pretty interesting to me. Uh, I'm a fan of The Walking Dead, and I like zombie movies and stuff. So this one sounds fun. I'm excited for this. Um, uh, next up, Moana is getting an animated series on Disney+. Plus, So that's coming out next year. Um, Moana was a fantastic... I uh, love Moana. Uh, Wait, didn't one you of just the, say that? 
Hmm? Which is which is the one with um with the rock? Didn't you just, just say there was a That's the rock. Yeah, that's the rock. Which um, is the one you just mentioned before? The first one you mentioned that's gonna be a series that was a movie. Lilo and Stitch. Oh, I got them confused. But, but that's live action. Moana right, that... is animated. Oh, okay. I thought Moana was gonna be made into a live action. That's what got me confused. Uh probably is. Um but this is the series. Right. And uh it's uh it real it literally says nothing is known about it. Um the nothing, no casting, no episodes, no fun facts. <laughs> they they literally don't know anything about it. They just know that it's coming out. My uh, but, my granddaughter absolutely loves Moana. Moana so, was fantastic, dude. I, I I loved that movie. It was really you know, classic Disney animation. It had great music. It was really good. Uh, the next one uh, is actually uh, I'm looking forward to. It's going to be fun. Um, Monsters at Work. So uh, there there was already a season of a Monsters, Inc. Um, series on Disney+. Plus. Uh, the first year Disney+, Plus came out, and it was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, this one is uh i guess going to be a, an extension to that you know expanding the monsters inc uh universe i guess you could say but uh it's monsters at work takes place the day after the monsters incorporated power plant started harvesting laughter instead of uh screams so it's kind of going to take us back to right after the, i guess the end of the monsters inc the original monsters inc movie so that seems fun. That does sound fun. Yeah, that sounds fun. Um, I'm hoping. Let's see. Uh, John Goodman, Billy Crystal, all the all the voices. John Ratzenberger. Oh, that, that's even better. Yes, it's going to have the actual voices. So, uh, I, count me in. I'm in for that. Um, that's going to be cool. Um, let's see. Next up is Ms. Marvel season two. Ron, I know you didn't see it, but uh, I'm excited for Ms. Marvel. I liked Ms. Marvel. I thought it was good. It was fun. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, let's see. And then a, a, a handful of Star Wars uh, shows. Uh, season three of The Bad Batch, which uh, which is, uh, I, I'll be honest, I haven't started watching The Bad Batch yet. Just call me Ron. Um I saw the first season. I didn't get to see the second. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I didn't love the Clone Wars. I uh, I didn't even finish the Clone Wars. So uh, I've been reluctant to watch another, although I did watch uh, Star Wars Rebels. Um, so I've been reluctant to start Bad Batch, but I hear it's great. Um, Star Wars Skeleton Crew is another animated series that uh, is coming out in 2024. Uh, season two of Tales of the Jedi, which I'm going to be honest, I haven't watched season one of that yet. I only saw little bits of those. Uh, what did you think about Tales of the Jedi? Was it any good? I only saw one or two of them. So yeah, I, I, the ones, one or two of them that I saw, were nicely, nicely animated, but you know, that it's not really for me. So I, it's okay. I don't love the Star Wars animation. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I liked Rebels. I didn't love Rebels. I liked it. And I think I watched it mostly because Thrawn uh, right. was in it, um, and, and it had Ahsoka a lot of. I, I just it had a lot of lead into Ahsoka as well. Obviously, yes. the series. So I liked Rebels. Didn't love it. I didn't like uh, Clone Wars. I didn't love it. So I haven't even finished it. So I don't know. Um, I'm going to give these a, a chance. I haven't checked out Tales of the Jedi yet or Bad Batch. So I need to. I need to give it a shot. Um, now, I am excited about uh, the next one. It's Star Wars uh, The Acolyte. And this was a prequel uh, to, I guess, most of the Star Wars series. Uh, the Acolyte is a mystery thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers. And it's going to take place during the High Republic era. So um, that sounds fun. Um and I, I believe it's live action. So, yes, uh, Jude Law. So I believe that's you know I, I prefer live action over the animated stuff. So uh, I am looking forward to the acolyte. 
Um, let's see. What's, what's next? What's next? Uh, and then the last one is one uh, I'm guessing this is uh, to um, tie in with the new Tiana uh, ride that's coming to Disney World at Disneyland. But it's a um, it's a musical series coming to Disney Plus uh, called Tiana. And it's just a continuation of Tiana's story from the princess and the frog. Not a lot of details about that one either, but it just says 2024 release date. So uh, I enjoyed princess and the frog. I have not seen it since it came out in 2009. So uh, it's been a really long time. Uh, maybe I should check it out again. I know I really enjoyed it uh, back then. I enjoy, um, you know, uh, I enjoy, uh, New Orleans and stuff. So uh, I need to check that out. All right, guys. So that just about takes care of all of the movies and TV shows, at least that Disney has released for us in 2024. Like I said before, there's a lot of stuff that is slated for 2024, but it just says, you know, unknown movie or unknown whatever. So a lot of stuff, a lot as far as the movies go, things coming out that aren't necessarily known to us yet. So uh, more to come. And uh, for the for the Disney Plus, there's about a million things coming out. And those are actually are listed, just no time frame. So everything says TBD 2024. And I only picked the things that I thought were they were interesting to me personally. You guys may go down that list and see things that that I didn't talk about that interest you. So there's a lot of stuff coming to Disney Plus, but uh, that's just a few things that I picked out. But we didn't talk about yet, and which is uh, I guess you could say we're leaving the saving the best for last is, uh, you know, because we're primarily a Disney World theme park uh, podcast. So uh, we left the best for last. We wanted to talk about what's coming to Walt Disney World in 2024. And there's a few things that uh, that we know about. And uh, but that we've been talking about for years that uh, may actually be coming to fruition in 2024 so let's start with the magic kingdom and you guys may remember back in uh, at the 23 of just a few months ago the imagineers uh said that they're going to be doing a revamp of the country bear jamboree coming in 2024 supposedly uh as far as i know they haven't shut anything down yet or you know, it's not close refurbishment yet. So I don't know. There is no nothing I could find online that gives a hard concrete date. But uh, supposedly coming in 2024 is the new and improved Country Bear Jamboree where our 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 bear pals are going to be singing country music versions of some of Disney's favorite music classics and you know, we've talked about it uh, a while back, kind of speculating on what some of the songs would be. We know for a fact they're going to do Bare Necessities because that's what we saw in the brief clip that they gave us at D23. So supposedly that's coming in 2024. And I'm a big fan of the Country Bear Jamboree. My uh, wife and children are not, so they can care less about this. But I'm actually pretty excited about this. I've loved. They seem to not like a big portion of that side of the park. They don't uh, like all the presidents. They don't like the big bear jamboree. Yeah, I don't. You know, they're just um not as cool as I am. I don't know how they were. They got so lucky to be blessed with me as the husband and father. Uh, but they're not living up to that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, how can you not love the Country Bear Jamboree? I don't know. It may be time to trade them on, trade them in on some new ones. Um, the, maybe... the neat thing about that is that even though it's not closed, they could still be easily working on that in the background and getting things ready. So probably yes. I mean, the music is, you know, they're just recording that elsewhere. But 
you know, there's obviously got to be programming for the for the the movements in the mouth movement and stuff. And there has to be the actual human animatronics. I would look; those animatronics are original, old school, nineteen seventies animatronics. You know, so uh, I would have to again just you know making a big assumption here, and you know Disney is probably going to prove me wrong because. You know, they don't like to spend money anymore, but the, you would think that they're going to improve those yeah. animatronics. But, you know, who knows? Uh, that wasn't a part of the uh, information release that they talked about at D23. So if they're not in, in going to replace animatronics, then it's probably a pretty quick turnaround. You know, just I imagine they could probably write the code away just like they're recording the music away and then just come in and just just yeah. plop it in like a you know like a floppy disk or so you know um but uh, those of you that are listening to the show that are under the age of 35 you have no idea what a floppy disk is but uh you know maybe they will uh do new animatronics or whatever i don't know I guess we'll just wait to see. And we don't even know for sure if it's happening in 2024. It is assumed that it'll happen in 2024. Oh, got you. Got you. So, you know, uh, maybe it, I mean, listen, today is, uh, you know, the, it, it's, it's the brand new year. So they've got 365 days to get this done in 2024. So who knows? I don't know. I guess we'll uh, just have to wait and see. One thing that is confirmed at the Magic Kingdom for 2024, you know, barring any setbacks or something like that, is Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And we all know that Splash Mountain closed at Disney World in early 2023 and is scheduled to reopen as Tiana's Bayou Adventure and what Disney describes as, and I'm going to quote, late 2024. So late could be October, late could be December 30th. Who the heck knows? But supposedly opening in 2024 is uh, the replacement to beloved Splash Mountain, which uh, I will uh, will forever miss. Uh, have you guys been keeping up with the, the updates? They, they post pictures on Disney social media and stuff a lot and show the transformation of of Splash Mountain into Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Have you guys been keeping up with that? Have you seen it? Every now and then I've seen I've seen the exterior of it. What about you, Ron? No, I've not been keeping up with it. Look, um you guys, you know y'all know I'm old school and um uh not happy that Splash Mountain is gone. Uh so but I'm trying not to be overly negative yeah. or anything about it but the pictures that i've seen of the exterior uh i'm 50 50 on the 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 tile work or the what they're doing to the ground they're laying uh, i guess brickwork and stuff is beautiful looks really really cool really nice um listen i've been to the bayou i've i've been to louisiana okay and what they've done to the exterior of splash mountain which is you know this big mountain they took the big tree off the top and all they're doing it like like it's covered in flowers it, i don't know like wildflowers or something uh listen when i went to the bayou the, nothing was covered in flowers i don't know maybe i was on the wrong side of the bayou but I, well, it, it could just, also be hearkening back to a different era because then doesn't that movie take place in the early uh, 20th century or the late 19th? Yeah, I think uh, I haven't seen it since it mm -hmm. came out in 2009, uh, but I think it's I think it's 20th century. You know, I think they mm -hmm. had electricity and stuff, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Right. Um, but but. I don't know. I'm trying not to be overly critical, but why is that mountain covered in flowers? I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Is the only thing I can think is they're just trying to make it look princessy. Yeah. And I think I just coined a new term, <laughs> princessy. 
uh, I guess it looks princessy, but it's not reminiscent of the bayou. It doesn't look like any bayou I've been in. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to be too realistic and, and hey, Dewey, this is fantasy and and magic and make believe and stop trying to pretend this is the real bayou. You know, maybe I should just do that. But can I, can I make a comment on that though? I, I, yes. I did notice um, um, that the original location of Splash Mountain over in um in a uh, or I don't even know if Splash Mountain's there. I'm sorry. What I meant to say is that the the Louis the New Orleans section of Disneyland seems more authentic to what um to what New Orleans really looked like because I've seen photos of New Orleans Square and then actually you know being in the disneyland version you kind of it looks very similar to what it should look like whereas in disney world it's where is it in frontierland it's frontierland, frontierland. Yes. so and here i i'm just going to go ahead and we're just going to maybe go off on a bit of a tangent but there's all kinds of rumors online about What's going to happen to Frontierland? Is it still going to be Frontierland once they open Tiana's and all that? And there's speculation that Pecos Bill, uh, you know, the mile long bar and all that stuff is going to be turned into a Tiana restaurant, much like they already have at Disneyland. Uh, so there's some speculation that that whole area, uh, which is frontier land is going to be turned into like a sort of kind of new orleans square kind of like disneyland kind of like that and, and also i think over I, I just remembered it's critter country over there at uh disneyland right critter country well i haven't been to disneyland you'll have to tell yeah, me but i think that. that's what it's called it's not called frontier yes land. Yeah, crit oh, that's it's Critter Country instead of Frontierland. There is no that, Frontierland. I think Critter Country is where um where Splash Mountain was. Well, listen, we already know that Disney, you know, considers uh they obviously considered Splash Mountain problematic because of the era it was created. And they sort of have that feeling about Frontierland, you know. So uh it wouldn't surprise me if they were just like Eh, we're going to get rid of Frontierland altogether and just made it all uh, New Orleans town or New mm -hmm. Orleans Square or whatever they wanted to do. And this new Country Bears uh, could kind of falls into that. You know, they're revamping Country Bears and it's going to be yeah. more of a Nashville kind of, you know, a Nashville country music take on the uh, on the Bears, so they could definitely redo the outside of those buildings to look like uh, New Orleans with the wrought iron, and you know, I don't know if you've ever been to New Orleans, um, but I could definitely see them doing that to get rid of you know more of what they consider you know problematic uh, time period in American history. But so that's all speculation, but even still, okay, even if I've been to New Orleans and there were no flower covered mountains in New <laughs> Orleans either, you know, I, I you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, uh, I don't know. It, it, it could very well go on uh, a name change. I was just looking really quickly and I noticed that Critter Country was originally named the Indian Village, which of course became later Frontierland. So Frontierland turned into Critter Country. So that's it's very possible yes uh you know uh again that's all speculation and we're really we're just talking about tiana's bayou adventure which we know is coming and supposedly open at the end of 2024 uh, i guess i just need to stop trying to make or trying to want the Tiana's Bayou Adventure to actually look like the Bayou. You know, I mean, we're talking about a. a it probably fake will inside. Up, Maybe inside it will. Yeah, you know, it's it's a fake made up place in a yeah. theme park and based on a cartoon. So I need to stop being so literal. I guess maybe that's my problem. But um, it's a uh, it's an it idealized. 
Hmm? Yes, exactly. No, I'm just saying if it opens up in 2024, it means they're almost there. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. So joke. I'm going... I'm going to stop being so literal and critical and I'm going to uh, enjoy the lovely flower covered Bayou mountain. That's uh that's my uh, resolution for 2024. I'm going to be less critical, less literal, and I'm going to enjoy the Bayou, the flower covered Bayou mountain. That's a uh, new improved Dewey for 2024. I know you guys are excited about that. Remember, um, before any before the the Imagineers do any of these things, they do make their little trips out to the actual locations to try to get inspiration and ideas. So they must have seen something that made them want to do it this way. Flowery Bayou Mountain. That's where they went. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it for Magic Kingdom uh, for 2024. You know, they just opened Tron and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that's already happened, you know, in 2023 and stuff. So that's all we've got in 2024. And only one of those are confirmed. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm excited for Country Bears more than I am about Tiana. But uh, let's move on over to Epcot Center. And uh, so basically everything's already opened that we're getting with uh this new uh neighborhood i guess you know world celebration has opened and um and we're all saying wait that's it <laughs> well you know again hey tony stop trying to make me critical this is a new <laughs> this is we're trying to be happy we're trying to be happy for the new year right yeah but when we look at the concept art that yeah. we were given you back know, in, uh, gosh, back in ago. like 2019 or something, or mm -hmm. maybe even before that, I don't remember, 2017, when they announced this new Epcot, um, a lot of the things that they talked about didn't come to fruition. We didn't get the uh, Spaceship Earth re rehab. We didn't get the Play Pavilion. We Mary didn't Poppins. Get, we didn't get Mary Poppins. We didn't get... um that uh that festival center that three-story festival center that was going to have a a green space on top the so view, you could yeah. watch fireworks shows and stuff uh basically all we got was um the oh, guardians of the galaxy well Fair yeah game. i guess i don't know that i that uh, and then the gardens I, where they got rid of the um where interventions used to be right interventions is now or not uh, what was interventions on that side is now the um moana water park you know mm -hmm. advent, what is it the i don't know journey dewey's, of water journey yeah, of dewey, water dewey's most uh anticipated attraction of 2024 when he returns hey, he's look, gonna be running around those fountains going we <laughs> listen moana the journey of water would be beautiful in animal kingdom but you know it, it's a mix match now they're like hey let's take some some stuff that should be an animal kingdom and put it in epcot and confuse everybody uh that's what's going on <laughs> ron i'm glad you like that um but it's You're there so up this is an amusement park you you let them be <laughs> ron you've known me 20 years Have, are, are, do you really no. think i'm gonna let it be <laughs> but it's there. I, nothing I can do about it. Um, so uh, accept it, embrace it, whatever. But so we got Journey of Water and we got that's about it. That's about it. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know. The only thing that's coming in 2024 is Communicore Hall. So I guess it's Communicore Hall and Communicore Plaza. This is going to be Epcot's dedicated festival areas and supposedly is going to be complete in 2024. This new area is going to have an outdoor concert area with some indoor space for cooking demonstrations, character meet and greets, and more. Uh, and this will transform the park's annual festivals, uh, which were in the past few years have been happening over in the Wonders of Life Pavilion. And uh, which was always, you know, I miss Wonders of Life. That was a lot of fun when I was a kid. 
So I always really enjoyed being able to go into that pavilion, even though it wasn't Wonders of Life anymore. You could walk in there and, you know, they had all the the merchandise and stuff for, for Flower and Garden or whatever. But it was cool being able to go inside that building. And uh, so I guess once they open up Communicore Hall, I don't know what's going to happen to Wonders of Life Pavilion. It's, it's just going to be shuttered again. And there's the play pavilion has been wiped off of their, you know, coming attraction. So I don't know what the plan is for that. But Communicore Hall, uh, I'm excited mo mostly just because it's called Communicore Hall, you know, throwback to the old school Communicore back in the 80s, uh, 1980s Epcot. But was, that's really. Was that at the that? spot? Was that at the spot that you were sitting at where there were construction going on when you actually went there and you, you sent a video to us? Was that the spot they were doing the construction at? Uh, yes. Uh huh. The uh, so I was standing in front of the walkway that's facing the um, journey into imagination, the the, the yeah. upward waterfall or whatever. And behind me were those construction walls. That is uh, that is a part of journey in uh, journey of water. But also back over there is also where Communicore Hall is. And this is a brand new structure. Am I right? It yes, like brand new. They they leveled that whole side of uh what was Communicore and then interventions uh that's gone that entire building where club cool was and the fountain view um was that starbucks for a little while and stuff and where the character meet and greets were inside there that that's leveled gone flattened dug up goodbye and um part of journey into water journey of water or whatever it's called is over there and community core hall is uh under construction i mean it's pretty much built it's the at least the the structure is you know i guess they're working on interiors and stuff now supposedly coming in 2024 but like many other things uh at disney right now no date no no month no season no nothing just uh 2024 is all we know so but that's it for for Epcot, which uh, kind of makes me sad because it's a little underwhelming compared to the the grand plans and and all of that concept art and stuff that we got, you know, five or six years ago. Um, not a lot, not a lot happened. So, you know, Community Core Hall is the last piece and probably the last thing that we're going to get in Epcot as far as um, improvements go or enhancements or refurbishments or anything probably not going to be a whole lot happening for a while so uh that's it i guess epcot's done so um yippee uh moving on over to disney's hollywood studios actually a couple of cool things that are going to be happening here so you guys probably know that over there in the animation courtyard the theater uh, where the Little Mermaid stage show has been for, I guess, you know, since the 89 it opened, uh, when the park opened, that has been closed since Disney World closed due to the pandemic in 2020. It The Little Mermaid show never reopened. So um, they're supposedly getting ready to... Uh, debut sometime in 2024 the new show which is going to showcase ariel's dream to be part of the human world with new set pieces and new special effects and as well as classic songs from the film so it doesn't sound like they are it it, it kind of just sounds like a reimagining of the same show uh new and improved you know, because you figure, remember when that show came out in 89, those lasers, you know, that that are a big part of that show were, you know, kind of state of the art and pretty amazing back in the, you know, late There were a lot of great 90s. effects in that show. There was like the the rainfall and the mm -hmm. the feeling of the of, of actually being undersea. Yes, absolutely. But I guess it, they felt it's a little tired or a little yeah. uh, outdated, I guess, you know, and now 2024. So they never reopened it in 2020. So it looks, it sounds like it's just going to be a reimagining with new and improved, uh, probably new sound systems, definitely new set pieces and new special effects. So they're just going to kind of plus up 
the 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 former show and it's got a new title now it's going to be called the little mermaid a musical adventure so that's coming in 2024 supposedly again like many other things no concrete date or anything like that and then tony you're gonna like this one okay in uh 2024 again not concrete we're just assuming but uh over at star tours they're going to be dropping in some new clips. And uh, so there'll be more stories and characters added to the classic Star Tours attraction. And uh, I'm just guessing, this is just Dewey's uh, guesses or hypotheses or whatever. Um, I'm guessing they're going to drop some Ahsoka in there. From, yeah. You know, put some Ahsoka in there because, you know, she's a very beloved character. And maybe some Ahsoka, maybe some Thrawn or something. That might be fun. Uh, I don't know if there's probably some more live action Rebels, you know, Hera or, you know, some people that were in the Sabine, you know, people yeah, that were in the them. Ahsoka. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know. That, I don't think they ever put any Rogue One characters in there. Uh, I'd love to see Andor or something like that. And considering the season two of Andor is coming out in uh, 2024. Uh, it would have been very easily done for them to record some some Andor scenes for new Star Tours adventures. So um, I haven't seen any release or any information uh, from Disney on this, but just just my you know ramblings of a crazy person. Uh, I think it would be really cool to see some Rebels characters, some Ahsoka. And maybe some Andor. I don't know. Just um, just some thoughts. And I, Tony, I, you're currently you're even wearing a Star Wars shirt, man. So I, we know you're a big fan. What do you think? What What would you like to see from these new scenes? Oh, I think I think the addition of those scenes would be great. They've got so many options as it is. In fact, I think we mentioned this that when we went to Disneyland, I would say that's the ride we went on the most. I mean, there was the most availability at the end of the night when you're leaving the park, and it's it was open when you got to the park. And I think we went on that maybe about six or seven times, and each time was a different adventure. So, I'm looking forward to that. It'd be fun. Ron, um, I I believe you've been on Star Tours, right? It's only been there for for you know thirty years, but this is the guy that has never been on the Enchanted Tiki Room, so I, I'm not going to assume that you've done Star Tours. I've are you been on Star Tours several times? Are you familiar with the film franchise called Star Wars? Never heard of it. <laughs> Okay, so so Ron is familiar with Star Wars. So you've been on Star Tours. I saw Star Wars when it was in the theaters. Thank there you, you go. Emma. Oh, that's right, because you're a great deal older oh, than no. I am. I, <laughs> <laughs> I had, for the record, I had sheets on my bed and pillowcase of Star Wars. So you can just suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right then. So uh, I had Empire Strikes Back sheets and pillowcases uh, when I was a kid because I was three when Star Wars came out in the theaters. And so uh, I do not believe I saw that one in the theaters. So, so Ron, you're familiar with the film franchise Star Wars. You have been on Star Tours. What do you think? What would you like to see? New scenes, new characters. Is that exciting to you? It is exciting that that it's I that's been in need of a, a refit for a while, in my opinion. And and I'm excited because the technology, if if they do it right, should be out of this world. Uh, there you go. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Um, so, I mean, if you think about it, when did the adventures continue? That that started, like that came out in like something. 20, I don't, was it that old? I don't think it was that old, was it? It's like 2014, 2017, something like that. Hey, you, you might be right, Tony. It, I'm not, I oh, you know what? It up. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll look it up because I think it was before my last trip there. Uh, continue, continue. Um, what I was, what I wanted to say about um, 
Star Tours also is that, you know, as we mentioned early, early on on our episodes, it's it was my favorite ride. Um, uh, if I was going to pick a ride, that was my favorite ride. And you would think I'd be sick of it because I went on it so many times over all those years. But the fact that we went on it so many times, and it wasn't even just me, my wife wanted to go on it all those times that when we were just yeah. there in May. So it, it's, it's, it still is fun now as it was uh, back then. I think it was around 2010, 2011, around then, because I think it happened, it happened um, before my last trip there and i only got to go on once before my last time and that was 2013 so i think it was around 2011 2012 around wow, okay i i and you you're probably right yeah um i just didn't realize it was that long ago so we're talking well over a decade mm -hmm. so it's and and they've added some new, they added some um galaxy's edge scenes yes. in there Galaxy's and, Edge. They've uh, added all the new movies are there. Um, yeah, there's some some Kylo is in there and Kylo and well, you know and Finn it, and Poe. Yep, Poe is in it. So I, I guess you're right because you figure Kylo and all the the Force Awakens that came out in 2015. So yeah. it had to be before 2015. So you're probably right. It, about, I just um, I just found it May 20th, 2011. 2011. Dang. Yeah. Okay. So that's wow. I, I did not realize it'd been that long. I was thinking 2014, but wow, 2011. So it's over a decade since they made the the improvements or whatever and changed it to the adventure continues. So I think it's fun that they keep adding new scenes and stuff. And that just is rewritability because nearly every time you get on it, you, you're getting a new a new experience, you know, because they it's chopped up into three sections. So. Uh, that's pretty cool. So I'm excited for that. Uh, so over at Animal Kingdom, now we know back at D23, they made all kinds of announcements like this blue sky stuff. They were like, uh, maybe over where Dino Land is, we're going to get some Encanto or maybe we're going to get some, Indiana you know, Jones. there was uh, Indiana Jones, right? That was a possibility. And they haven't made any kind of serious concrete announcements about that. I, you know, I guess eventually they're going to do something with Dino Land, uh, but that's not in 2024. But what is supposedly coming in 2024? If you remember back at D23, they did talk about the Zootopia, uh, a new 4D movie coming into the Tree of Life to replace It's Tough to Be a Bug. So supposedly that new it's tough to be a tr tough to be a bug attraction replacement is coming and to be replaced by that Zootopia storyline in 2024 and I say that with a question mark because is it I don't know uh, you know supposedly coming in 2024 but uh, just like every other single thing on this list except for Tiana that did have a designation of late 2024. Nothing else has a time frame. So we're just we're shrugging our shoulders and saying maybe 2024 for Zootopia. Uh who knows? Maybe so. We'll see. But uh, that'll be fun. You figure Animal Kingdom opened in 1998, so we're really close to 30 years of it's tough to be a bug in the Tree of Life theater. So Probably about time to get some new, some something new in there. You know, um, my children uh, very unfamiliar with uh, it with a bug's life. Um, you know, and my kids are twenty and seventeen, and uh, that that's not really one that they watched a lot because it was before them. So maybe it's uh, time to get something more relevant uh, in there. So maybe twenty twenty four, maybe not. Who knows? Hmm. what were you saying that's just crazy that how old that is is just crazy to me yeah um i'm fighting every instinct in my body to make a a comment about waiting too long to replace stuff but um you know me i'm i'm one of those uh refurbished not replaced guys i don't know does this count uh as refurbishing this their just going to put a new movie into 
to the Tree of Life Theater? I, I don't know. I guess that counts as refurbishment. They're removing Bugs Life, you know, uh, or they're removing It's Tough to Be a Bug, which is based on the characters from A Bug's Life. But um, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say it counts as a refurbishment because they're not they're not going to tear down the 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 tree of life, you know, to put something else else there. So I and they can they kind of make that work because the animals in the tree of life are kind of the animals that are in Zootopia as well. Oh yeah, gosh, you Tony, didn't don't count, you didn't count you didn't count France as being a refurbished. You count that as a total loss. France, not France, um, Norway. Oh, that was a total loss. It's not about Norway anymore. It's about Arendelle. Ron, you're you're doing that. You're setting me up on purpose. Stop getting me worked up in the new year. You're you're fighting against new Dewey. Stop it. <laughs> you're doing that on purpose. Come on. Ron, you, you know you bring it's up Frozen boat, Ever right? After. You know it's Dewey's. Boat, right? <laughs> Oh, man, you're going to get me fired up. Let's we're, we're talking about Zootopia, Ron. Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> now I forgot what I was saying, but um, yeah, I, I guess it's uh, it's it's cool. It's going to be fun. Oh, I know what I was saying, Tony. Don't give them any ideas. They're going to start. They're going to sand down all the animals on oh. the Tree of Life and make it Zootopia. Characters. No, no, let's not do that. No, we don't want to do that. They're going to be out there with the like, those power, the handheld sanders <laughs> sanding off that big monkey head and going to make it a Zootopia sloth. Don't give them any ideas, Tony. All right. So that's it for the parks. Not a whole lot happening in 2024. And like I said, most of that stuff is speculation fingers crossing maybe it'll happen in 2024 kind of stuff we don't know uh maybe <laughs> come december of 2024 uh we can go back and talk about this and see how much of this stuff actually happens that might be fun so well one one quick thing do we before we forget uh regarding the what's happening in the parks at disney world i saw something saying that starting january 9th guests with park hopper benefits or an annual pass will be able to visit another theme park at any time during park hours, which is a, so, a big change. Yep. There's uh, a few things. There's no more park reservations. Right. Um, I, I think annual pass holders are still going to have some limitations where they'll have to make reservations. We'll extended access for them. They're called, they've got a new, I don't know what you would call it, but it's a new program for AP holders and it's called good to go days. <laughs> and your their annual pass holders are going to have uh, a calendar and a good to go day means that they don't have to make park reservations. So I guess in busier times, they're still going to have to make reservations for certain parks, but there is going to be, Again, like I said, and this is a Disney term. This came from uh, one of the Disney websites. Uh, good to go days that they won't have to. Regular, uh, you know, ticket people that are just purchasing tickets for a vacation. Uh, uh, the the reservation system is going away for them in January. So, and then, and like you said, park hopping. Because right now, park hopping you can't do it until after two. Right. I, that's what's going away in January is that uh, you can park up any time of day, right? And, uh, yeah, and especially uh, there's there's actually new news for Ron and myself. Um, there'll finally be complimentary self-parking for Disney Resort Hotel stays. So if you're staying in a Disney Re Resort Hotel, you'll finally be able to park free again. Yes, uh, <laughs> because that $600 a night yeah, or uh, more. at your hotel didn't cover parking for right. a couple of years. So um, I think that's I realize maybe I lost, maybe I did, but I don't didn't remember. So if you stayed in a park, you still had to pay for parking. Yes. yes. You had not for a parking at the theme park. You had to pay to park, park at, the, at hotel. the hotel, a nightly fee. And it was but a steep one too. It was like over $40. It I was remember. 35, 40, yeah. $45, something like that's, that. That's ridiculous well that was a chapek <laughs> thing remember our good buddy bob paycheck 
Um, and when Iger came back, that's one of the things that he rolled back was was so that's good. Plus, they're um, also returning uh, the parking trams to all the four parks. With a lot of them were missing for a lot of the past four or five years, and it's nice to see them back because that's a long walk in those parking lots. I don't even know how people did that. And I'm not real sure why that ever, yeah, why that didn't come back. That is, it's got to be a, a cost saving measure. That's got the only thing it could. Weren't be. they also refurbishing those trucks so they could uh, handle bigger loads or something? Maybe I don't know. Uh, I, 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 all listen. They don't need to shut down all trams to do yeah. repairs. Yeah. You know, Agreed. that's, Agreed. that's, it was, you know, kind of weird. I remember back uh, many years ago when, do you remember when the trams didn't have doors? Yeah. And then somebody, yep. <laughs> somebody fell off a tram yep. or something. So they're like, oh, we got to put some doors on these things. They didn't stop tram service yep. to do that. They, they brought one or two out at a time put some doors on it and then put those in service and took some others out. So I'm not buying for a second that they're doing repairs or increasing capacity. And that's, that's all a, a load of bull. And if there are any listeners who've never been to Walt Disney world, and sometimes believe it or not, there are people who've never been there. It's a very, very long walk from the parking lot to the actual park. I mean, you're doing pretty much a park, uh, a park walk just to get to the park, depending on where you're parking at. And to do that at the end of the day is uh, sometimes murderous. Look, it when you when you get there in the morning, I'm like, ah, let's just walk. Yeah, no big yeah, deal. You're like, yeah. I'm ready to go. And, and you hoof it. At the end of the day, you, you know, everybody's tired. Everybody's cranky. Everybody's, you know, pitching a fit or, you know, so tired and your feet hurt. You don't want to walk that on the way out. So. And to answer so one more question. To get to Space Mountain is a lot different than walking to get to your car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's true. Especially at the end of your stay. But yeah. one more thing that uh, we had gotten a question about this way, way early on in the show a few years ago. Um, they are also going to be including digital downloads of select photo pass attraction photos with the purchase of Disney Genie Plus. So if you get Disney Genie Plus, you'll also be able to use some certain photo pass attractions, which is an extra perk if you're going to go that way. So um, did you... This is kind of off topic, but since you just mentioned Genie Plus, it just popped into my head. Mm -hmm. Did you see how much Genie oh, Plus was costing yes. over the Christmas and New Year's break? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes. So when Genie it, Plus came out, it was 15 bucks a day per person. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, Disney has this, you know, busier times cost more. Right. So, And that's the case. You want for Genie anything. Plus? Well, this is where you pay for it. The most I saw for yeah, the most I saw for Genie Plus over the last week or so was forty two dollars a day per person. Wow, that is outrageous! Yep, holy smokes! For something that used to be free, now it's forty two dollars per person. And did you see the crowds during the holidays as well? I mean, the place was completely packed. Yes, yeah, all I, the parks, I'm, not just uh, not just uh, Disney World. Listen, and you guys know that uh, I I'm lucky enough to have a cast member as a family member. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not I don't typically buy tickets. Sometimes we buy the military sales um it, you know, that kind of stuff, but not all the time. But for a family that is already paying so much money for tickets yep. and and hotels and food, now $42 a day per person. I mean that's that's another two hundred bucks for a family of four per day. You With do the hope that, for, that your that your bride doesn't break down and you, and you get. And listen, there's you know those things sell out too. They and do. And then the you there's only a certain capacity for Genie Plus, and they can run out of Genie Plus reservations. So you might pay that $42 per person and then try to use it. And test track is, is full capacity for the rest of the day. And you're not mm -hmm. getting test track. Oops, soaring. You're not getting that either. I and mean, don't even think about frozen ever after. So you might get, and I actually read an article earlier this week about it. Somebody was complaining that they got the genie plus and the only thing available at Epcot that they could use their $42 a day genie plus for was, 
uh, Journey into Imagination, Living with the Land, and The Seas with Nemo. <laughs> and, and if I paid $42 for that Genie Plus and those are my options, uh, my head is going to explode. So it used to be 42. To- it. I'll be honest, guys. My wife was at a conference in Orlando and wanted to go just because she's there. And so she did. But guess how much that one day ticket cost? So what park did she go to? Because it's different depending on park. Magic Kingdom. Uh, so she probably paid like $129, $139, something like that. $174. Get out of here. Are you serious? $174 for a one-day Magic Kingdom ticket. A last-minute last minute ticket? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll be honest. I don't know how they're keeping the crowds. I, I just I just don't not when they're they're just that's I'm sorry that's like Dewey said fast pass was free with a smile <laughs> did she get to do uh, much Ron hey matter of fact why don't you come over here and I'll show you how to use this and hey since we're here get on Peter Pan with me and sh- let me show you some neat it just it's just not the same things. And actually, Ron, now um smiles are no longer free. You have to pay for those now too. <laughs> That's an added feature of GD Plus. You want the cast member to smile? Seven ninety nine. <laughs> I I'll tell you, it, we went during COVID and it it really felt that way because all they could say to you is put your mask up, put your mask up. It was anyway. Did I'm, she get to go no, on anything, Ron? She did. She wrote a lot, but it was crowded and and they they stayed and now that i'm thinking about it that may have been uh, i'm getting confused but that may have been for the christmas party no the, i think that you're right about the price that is that much it is that much oh and you know what this is where i'm getting confused they decide not to pay that and they and go to the buy christmas day pass or something something after 5 it was oh. still quite expensive but they were able because it was a extended night they were able to still get a lot in so we've we've kind of gone off on a tangent here but uh you know uh it's relevant because we're talking about the stuff that's you know coming in 2024 but uh you know what's not coming in 2024 is cost cutting measures for the consumer you know disney does it all the time but they're not cutting there's no price decreases for us so Man, oh man, that's a lot. So that's, I think, did, Tony, you had some pretty good stuff you added. Is that everything you found about the parks coming that's in? That's what I found, yeah. Mm-hmm. So a couple of things coming to the property. Uh, there's a new DVC property opening in 2024. Uh, cabins at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. While 2024 will be light on new attractions at Disney World, there are some new rooms coming. So you can uh, sleep in a cabin over at the Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. And uh, it's a DV. Those are going to be DVCs. So it's uh, what they're calling the 17th Disney Vacation Club property on uh, there at the Walt Disney World Resort. So I've seen some pictures of the cabins. They look they look pretty cool, look nice and I don't know, rustic, like luxurious rustic or something. I don't know is what they're going for. Um, they look okay. They look nice. Um, I don't know what they're going to cost. And DVC is uh, out of my price range. But so that's coming if you want to stay over Fort Wilderness, which I guess being in close proximity to Magic Kingdom is uh, the reason why they're building all those DVCs because you know, because of the proximity to everything over there. But also, I want some proximity to the Hoopty Doo Review. I love that thing. So that's pretty cool. You could stay there. And then uh, the new tower at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, also uh, DVC property, is projected to open uh, in late 2024. And uh, have you guys seen this thing? The new tower? The new Polynesian Tower? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, you wouldn't know it's Polynesian because it looks like uh, the newest oh. Hilton. 
I misunderstood looks like what a, you meant. Yes, I did see that. And it, it does look like a Hilton. You're right. It looks like a Hilton, man. Yeah. If there's nothing Polynesian or Hawaiian or Pacific or anything about it, it looks like a... Uh, it, but they're doing looks, that to all the hotel rooms. I mean, I was surprised. I saw an interior a redo of the Animal Kingdom Lodge, and I was so disappointed. I mean, they took away all of what made it so charming to begin with. Yeah, absolutely. It's very cookie cutter. Yeah, uh, everything they're doing on to all these refurbishments on the inside. Um, but on as far as the Polynesian Tower, it's very generic. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the longhouses from the original Polynesian. And I mean, you know, it's like, hey, that looks like it's from the Pacific. Yeah. You, and actually, when you're on the monorail and you look down, you're thinking, oh, wow, that looks like fun to stay there. Yeah, absolutely. This new tower looks like, um, you know, you're you're in downtown Nashville at the at the Hilton. You know, it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't wow me or anything. It's it's unfortunate. But um, the newest uh, the newest Marriott building at the Polynesian is opening <laughs> in late 2024. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's going to be some some palm leaves or something as decorations on the inside. I don't know. Who knows? Are you but, kidding? Do you, know uh, much, do you know how much fake palm leaves cost? They're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, they're just going to paint some. They're not going to get decorations. Right. They'll they're paint gonna, them on the wall. It's going to be outside. Palm leaf wallpaper, Tony. That's what <laughs> we're going to have. And so those two, <clears throat> you got me laughing and now I'm choking over here, Tony. Um, So those two DVC properties are happening uh, opening in 2024, supposedly. Uh, and then the last one, the last thing I have is uh, actually kind of exciting and uh, probably long, long, long overdue. But the return of the Disney dining plan starts on January 9th. So the Disney dining plan will be back on the menu for those staying at Disney resorts. Wow. It's been gone since the pandemic. So since 2020, so basically four years of no Disney dining plan, uh, the plans will do debut again. And uh, depending on the type of plan you choose for kids, it's going to be 24 to $30 a day for kids and then 57 to $94 per day for adults. Depending on the plan, uh, you can get the just the quick service plan, you can get the full service plan and, and all that. So uh, different variations, but I always enjoy the Disney dining plan. So yeah. this is something that I think is uh, long overdue and I'm sure going to make a lot of people happy. Definitely. So, I, I enjoyed that actually when it was free back in the day when they would they would include it as part of your hotel stay. That was that was, that was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, that was unbelievable. So that's just about uh everything that I found that is happening uh coming in 2024. So a lot of stuff, not a whole lot of theme park stuff, but uh, you know, a few things here and there. But a lot of stuff happening, mostly Disney Plus news. There was a ton of stuff coming out on Disney Plus. But that's about it for everything that's coming in 2024. So listeners, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a holler, an email, or a shout out or something. Let us know what are you most excited to see, hear, experience, eat, do in 2024. Let us know in the comments or let us know in an email or something we'd love to hear from you so let's go ahead and head on over you know what i was going to talk about and what's happening around walt disney world uh, i was going to talk about the the opening of world celebration long long awaited opening it, it opened on december 23rd which just happens to be walt disney's birthday december uh, but 15, i think we I'm sorry, what I say? You said December 23rd. Oh, I must have a typo here. My you bad. Mean December 2023. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, December 5th, 2023. My bad. Sorry, I read that too quickly. Um, but so the long awaited uh world celebration is opened. And uh so 
but we kind of already co covered that when we were going over the things happening in 2024. Um, the the cool thing that I didn't talk about was the uh, in the center. I'm sure you guys have seen probably video or something on online, but uh, the centerpiece there is uh, the giant classic Epcot logo in the in the ground and uh, brought back some of that old 90s nostalgia because the the ground lights up now and it's that that Epcot logo. So that's really cool. And it it is um, it, it's incorporated into the amazing beacons of light uh, light show that happens on spaceship Earth. So it's you know the colors match you know so that that area where it used to be the Fountain of Nations now has that big planter and in the center of that planter is the the Epcot logo and all the lighting and stuff around that area uh, matches the lighting effects and colors and everything that's happening on the Spaceship Earth Beacons of Light show. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we kind of already covered the opening of of the that whole area with uh, everything. So I don't necessarily need to talk about it too much, but uh, pretty cool stuff. You guys seen the videos of the, the, new, the new logo that lights up on the ground and stuff? Not the logo. I saw the Walt uh, statue sitting there, but uh, the Dreamers, but I have not seen um, that. I'm going to have to look at that. Yeah, definitely take a look at it. Now, there was the first week it opened, which is can be expected. They were having some technical difficulties. Some of those panels on the ground were um, the lights weren't syncing up. And instead of being purple or whatever, like the rest of everything else, some of those panels were just illuminating and white instead of you know matching the rest of the rest of the logo or sometimes they were going out but it it i haven't uh seen any more reports of those malfunctions so i think they probably got that figured out and got that fixed but it's really cool you definitely need to take a look at that and uh, so that's just about all i had for what's happening around walt disney world we kind of already touched on that during the the main segment so good times all right and that just about does it for this episode of the wdw reflections podcast please find and follow us on all of our social media accounts we can be found on facebook instagram and on youtube at wdw reflections podcast and on twitter at wdw reflections this podcast can currently be found and played on many podcast platforms, and we'd love it if you'd give the show a follow wherever you listen. And if you love the show, please leave us some feedback on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Those positive feedbacks help the show reach a larger audience and helps us grow. Make sure you check out the website over at www.reflectionspodcast.com. And don't forget, you can always message us from any of those social media accounts from the website or you can email us at wdwreflectionspodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. And please keep coming back because we truly appreciate you. Thanks for reflecting on Walt Disney World memories with us on the WDW Reflections Podcast. See you real soon.